Sandy actually has a vivid memory of that day that she was taken from her home at 18 months of age. The day that I was placed with my white parents, I remember being placed in this red truck. When I look back on that now, I was terrified. The recreation that we did, it took a lot of convincing. She's like, why the hell do you have me walking down this road? We don't just walk down roads on the res. And then afterward, oh, I see what you're trying to do. That turned out good. Good job. My name is Drew Nicholas. I'm the director producer of Blood Memory. I'm currently located in eastern Pennsylvania on the land of the Lenape people. Blood Memory follows Sandy Whitehawk as she helps organize the first annual welcome home ceremony for adopted and fostered relatives who've been removed from the Rosebud tribe. I was 35 years old when I went home for the first time. I looked around and thought, I wonder if any of these people are related to me. I meet Chuck Holquin. He decides that he would help me look. And as we were driving, I was telling him that the only thing that I regretted was that I wasn't going to meet my mother because she'd already passed. And he took his hand and swept it across in front of him. And he said, this is your mother. She's been here waiting for you. Once an individual heals, they can then help an entire community heal. For those of you who are just coming here for the first time, uh, share that one thing that's on your heart. The philosophy that this project required us to adapt was one of complete transparency with the community, especially because of the intimacy you know, I didn't know my heritage, I didn't know my culture. Nobody, um, like, took me in and I just never felt loved. We did have permission from the tribe, we did have permission from those who were organizing, and we did make sure that we were allowed to film everybody as they speak. And we also said, hey, if you, if you don't want this to be in a film after you shared, just because you signed a release doesn't mean you can't revoke that consent or put limitations on it. And I think that was really important. In my life, I've never heard anybody acknowledge that America did this to us. Because this was a big, a big evil that hit, that hit us. With Sandy, we didn't even have a release with her until the film was cut the first time, just because we wanted to just keep that balance in our relationship. And to be completely honest, this film was underrepresented in terms of indigenous viewpoints behind the camera very early on. I think that's my mom. As a young white filmmaker, I didn't have a lot of indigenous filmmakers in my network. I think it, the thing that allowed her to trust me was that I went out to her powwow in Minneapolis, and when she heard that I was being kind to the people around her, that level of trust started to open up. And then pretty much since that, Sandy and I have just maintained a, a relationship for 10 years now. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's a beautiful gathering, beautiful evening here. 139th annual celebration here in Rosebud. As we became more exposed to the indigenous worldview, the whole purpose of the project shifted to reaffirming those who were sharing their stories and trying to raise those voices and work directly with the community as much as possible. That's really what Sandy and Rosebud were doing by hosting that ceremony is starting to create space and create language for those who've been removed to feel comfortable to come home. If the film can in some way uplift that message and uplift that effort and keep that momentum going forward, I mean, that really became like our driving force for the project. Where all our adoptees, friends and relatives, welcome home. Hey, ha, hey, ha.